Wonderful. We have our data ready to be uploaded into Flourish. So let's create our maps. Now we're going to do a, a similar sequence to these maps, right? So we're going to have one map for who won where, another map for Republican vote in percentages, another map for Democratic vote, another map for total votes for Hillary Clinton, total votes for Donald Trump, and perhaps some random graph at the end of the at the end of the story. In order to create a sequential story such as these here in Flourish, we will need to design each one of these graphics separately, right? As separate visualizations. So let's get started. I'm going to click on new and the template that I'm going to choose is map of US counties. First thing that I'm going to do is uh, is going to load over here. The map that I'm about to create is a shaded map, all right? So I'm going to get rid of the points data, right? That's done on the right. I'm going to open up points. I'm going to disable the points. So the point data will be invisible if we have any. Now I'm going to go to the data tab and I'm going to import my data on the shading data tab over here. I need to make sure that I'm shading data. Uh, I'm going to import my data. I'm going to select county data mod2, which is the file that I created before when I was manipulating the data the one that contains the absolute values. Now we have the date, the map is empty down here. Uh, first of all, we need to tell you where the region, where, what the region's names are, that's column B. So this is going to be column B. And then the values, right, it's going to be column, I believe if I remember well, column P, which is the one that contains the values that we created, positive for Republicans, negative for Democrats, if I'm not wrong. So let's try to navigate that um, until we get there. Let me see, this is still loading. There you go. So it has done something. Uh, yeah, it's, it was column P in my case. That's the column that contains Democrat or Republican percentage. Okay, so it's, it's creating a map that looks for now really, really bad. But I'm, we are going to play with the a color scheme right now, right? It goes from minus 100 up to 100. So what we are going to do is on the um, shading a column, what we're going to do is instead of sequential, we're going to make it diverging. Okay, so it will put the zero point here in the middle and then minus 100, minus and 100. And as you can see, it automatically selects red and blue, right? The problem is that it's using blue for Republicans and red for Democrats. And that's usually the opposite that, that happens in a real electoral map. So I'm going to reverse the colors. Okay, so it's going to use now red for the public, Republicans and blue for Democrats. Now, this is good enough for me. So it's using a gradient of color for each one of the of the candidates. But if you want to bin the colors, as I did on this map, we will need to create um, custom bins. All right? My bins were minus 60, minus 30, 0, 30, 60, and 100. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different bins. So if you want to do something like that, we will need to go to down here on the shading menu where it says continuous scale. Don't use it. How many buckets do I want? I want, well, we could keep these ones. This shows minus 100, minus 75, minus 50, minus 25, 0, 25. This is good, but if you want fewer, right, you can use as many as I did, 6. And then you need to give me the custom thresholds, which will be minus 100, minus 60, minus 30, 0, 30, 60, 100. I think that this is going to work. There you go. So it creates that for us. All right. So we'll, now we have our map already done. Let's minimize this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Remember that we can change the size of these whenever you wish. Now, dem or rep percentage, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So you can also sh change the... Um, a, the a shading legend. So the shade. Oh, show legend. We can hide it. Okay. So we can hide that, or we can, or we can show it. Now, as far as I can see, by the way, this is something that I didn't notice before. Um, it doesn't let you change this text over here. All right. There's, this may be something that I'm missing, or it is a feature that will come in the future. But in any case, if it is not here. What we could do to show something a little bit more meaningful and understandable over here would be to change that here, give that column a name that I can understand, all right, and then and then upload the data again so it will pick up the column name or the column header and use it as the as the text over here. But again, I may be missing something. There may be a way to change the uh, the legend that is displayed uh, on the um, sorry, I don't want the continuous color scheme. I tell you, I want to go back to these. There may be one way to change the legend somehow. Um, auto custom. Okay, let's try custom. Oh, there you go. Replace this text. Legend title. All right, so that's what I was missing. So replace this text. Okay, let's change that. As you can see, I'm still learning on the while I'm using a flourish. 
So this will be a Republican or a Democrat or Republican or who won where or something like that, right? So just in terms, and then you put here in percentage, okay? So people will understand that these are percentages. Um, there you go. So something like that, right? And we need to save this map, all right? So I'm going to save this map as who won where, so I can easily find it later on my shelf. Now, um, let's create other maps that we can later combine on the, so we have the who won where, we can return to this whenever we wish. Let's create another map just for Republican vote. So I'm going to create another map, I'm going to go over here, upload, or uh, by the way, I could, I could duplicate, by the way, let's show that. Um, so I already have one map, and I want my next map to be basically identical to this one, but with a different, with the same data set, but using a different column. So I could, I could spend time just creating a new map, uploading the data, or I could duplicate this map and then just change the column that has been loaded. So that's going to be faster, actually. I'm going to go to this pictogram here, duplicate this visualization. It's going to be called copy of who won where. Let's click on that. And we are going to call these Republican votes, okay, Republican votes. And uh, so this is going to be, it's going to load the same data, actually, it's going to look identical than the who won where map, just because we are using the same color we were using before. The only thing that we will need to do is to go to the data a section over here, when it finishes loading, and changing the column that it loads. So rather than loading, for example, P, the P column, it should load, if we're doing the Republican map, it should load the data on the O column, and then uh, instead of um, using a, a dual color scheme, we should use a continuous color scheme. So here's the map, I'm going to go to data, and instead of P, I'm going to load O. Okay, so that's the column that contains the percentage of Republicans. I'm going to go back to preview because we need to do something else with the data. I want these two um, in, on the shading legend. I'm going to change the buckets because, um, sorry, not the shading legend, the um, shading. I'm going to change the buckets. So I'm going to use, for example, uh, just four buckets and I'm not going to use custom thresholds. Let's see what happens. There you go. So I just change the number of buckets to four and I don't tell you what thresholds I want and it automatically uses that. But the color should not be blue and red, right? This is a Republican map. So I'm going to change the, instead of diverging color scheme, I'm going to use sequential color scheme. And then the color should be red. And I need to unreverse the colors because right now, remember that before we reverse the colors, so darker now is more, is less than lighter. I'm going to uncheck reverse the colors. So actually darker means more votes for the Republican party. Now, the question may be, why don't we just create a second map here on this same visualization that shows us also the Democratic vote, and we can have like a couple of buttons, Republican vote or Democratic vote, side by side. Why should we create another map for Democratic vote instead of just merging them both here on this single visualization? The answer is what I explained in a previous video, which is that you cannot select, unfortunately, one color palette per map. If you want to use a, a different color palette per map, you need to create several separate maps. This may be something that the Flourish team will change in the future. Anyway, the Republican vote map is already, right? And in the next video, we're going to create a Democratic map and a couple of graphics.